One of the biggest energy drains in any home is when items powered by electricity are left on when they're not in use. And this can include lights, fans, TVs, video games, really anything we forgot to turn off. And this is where occupancy sensors come to the rescue. I'm going to go learn more. Joining us today to tell us more about occupancy sensors is Gerald from Premier Electric. Thanks for being with us, Gerald. Thanks for having me. I have seen sensors like this in office buildings and businesses. Why should homeowners consider installing an occupancy sensor? Well, the big thing is, is cost efficiency um, can help on the uh, electrical bill. Uh, other things are the conveniency of the occupancy sensor. Uh, from carrying your laundry in with a handful of groceries, trying to get in through the front door, it's just nice to be able to have that switch turn on without a thought, or the chaos of the family, trying to get them out for school, and last thing you want on your mind is to make sure everything is off. Absolutely. Now you have a lot of different devices here. Can you tell us about the different options available? Yes. So we have the most common wall switch that's going to replace your general wall switch in the home. Uh, can pick up the motion as well as the sound of the person in the room that's occupied. You have the variants that you can set up depending on the sensitivity of the sensor um, as well as you can change the durations of the time of the lights turning off after a certain amount of time. Uh, you have the capabilities of dimming as well and then depending on your circumstance you have a three-way and a four-way option as well so you're not limited. Uh, you have the uh, wireless setup as well which will communicate with additional devices into the home uh, depending on the uh, angles and stuff that you need to catch the homeowner. You have uh, the wall switch that depending on you have a couch or you have a bookcase in the way your wall switch isn't going to see you. You can have this mounted in a corner, uh, certain angles of the wall, or if you just want to make sure that uh, it's not catching certain people walking outside the room and turning it on. That makes sense. You have your ceiling mount type 360. This will cover a lot more area, especially if you want to make sure those lights are staying on. Um, and these are very easy to install, all wireless, so it saves a lot of cost in installation. Uh, you have your daylight harvesting sensor as well. Uh, so this will uh, determine the amount of foot candles coming into the room and it'll dim the light accordingly to uh, help with the cost efficiency of uh, the lights. Even greater energy efficiency with that, huh? Absolutely. And then you have your wall switch as well um, that you can integrate in with your occupancy sensor to turn off certain devices that you want uh, to turn on only when the room is occupied as well. Now, Gerald, what's the difference between an occupancy sensor and a vacancy sensor? So an occupancy sensor more uh, takes on the uh, role of turning on and off the lighting uh, versus a vacancy sensor, you have to manually turn it on and then it'll turn off during the duration of time setting. Okay. What, what kind of rooms or spaces are really the best spots to put this kind of technology? So big ones are going to be rooms that you're occupied, but you don't go back into over a duration of time. Your garage, uh, your laundry room, your uh, closets, it'll save you having to worry about the lights being turned on for days. It sounds to me like this translates into significant energy efficiency. If lights are going off automatically, what kind of energy savings can homeowners expect to see? Yeah, they can see a range from 25% or greater in increase. In That's great. And, and do you consider this a do-it-yourself project? You said this one was really easy to install. Is that something I can do myself or would you recommend a professional do that? I would recommend an electrician to uh, review the scenario for you. Um, and always with energized circuits, it's nice to have a licensed electrician dealing with that. Well, speaking of that, why don't you walk us through your process briefly and how long that takes? Yeah, so we'll identify the situation and the circumstance for each customer, uh, pick the appropriate equipment for the situation, um, such as a common wall switch. Uh, we make sure the circuit's off, uh, replace the wall switch, put in the new wall, wall switch, and then verify that the system is working properly. If people have pets, 
can they utilize this technology? Absolutely. With the uh, adjustment of the sensitivity as well as uh, uh, turning off the sound is the capabilities. All right, well, you've, I'm sure you've piqued the interest of a lot of people out there. So if you could give us a broad range on price, including the device as well as the installation. So the device can range uh, from $60 a greater, um, depending on the uh, quantity that you're trying to deal with in the situation, plus the installation. And I imagine each of these is a different price point depending on the scenario. Absolutely, and product. Great. Thank you, this is fabulous information. Yeah. If you'd like to learn more tips and tricks for making your powerhouse more energy efficient, visit our website at powerhousetv.com. The motion sensing feature on most lights and security systems is a passive system that detects infrared energy. These sensors are known as PIR, passive infrared detectors, or pyroelectric sensors.